What's going on? Pistons win in overtime um, in a hell of a game, and it's been a lot of uh, great games in NBA. Um, you had last night, you had the Lakers and the um, Spurs, and also the Celtics, and, and the Magic was a great game. And tonight, you had Blake Griffin prove why the Pistons traded him, traded for him. He dropped 50 points tonight. Andre Drummond uh, did go throughout the game. I think it was in overtime or the fourth quarter he got throughout for for nothing. You know, he shouldn't be suspended. They're going to end up, um, you know, pulling that back. But let's go through the stat line real quick. And Beeb dropped 33.76, 11 rebounds. Covington, 16-9. Sarge 14, 4, and 8. Um, Markel Folsom do pretty much nothing, 3, 1, and 5. J.J. Reddick was the big one, 36, and 5. And then you had some other guys do a few things for the Pistons. Um, obviously, Blake Griffin for 57 assists and 5 rebounds. Andre Drummond was 14, and 14 with 2 assists, 14 rebounds, 14 points. Reggie uh, Bullock scored 17 points. That was a quiet 17 because I don't remember seeing him score. Um, Reggie Jackson had 23, 3, and 3. Uh, Ish Smith had a big game, 21 points, 3 assists, uh, 1 rebound. And then everybody else just kind of pitched, a little pe- couple people pitched in. Um, but it was an excellent game. No Ben Simmons tonight, like we talked about in the, uh, the preview uh, video. Um, but it was a good game. Um, you know, Drummond showed a little bit of heart tonight, but still, Joel and B got the best of him. Not because of the ejection, because the ejection was horseshit. Drummond didn't bow him or nothing. Um, it looked like he bowed him, but he didn't. And he threw Drummond out in the fourth for overtime one or two. But um, Blake Griffin stepped up. It was a blessing in disguise. Blake Griffin had a monster game. When people question why Blake Griffin is here, Blake Griffin is, is capable of great things. And I started to see that last year when he was with the Clippers. I think in the first two or three games, he had two or three game winners. And um, he definitely improved his ball handling. People looking at him as Blake Griffin five, six, seven years ago. Whatever it may be, uh, he's a definitely a new player. Worked on his ball handling. And improved going in from two years to last year and improved from last year going in this year. Um, you know, uh, Sixers was a good team. You know, um, Joel B was working out. Uh, Cyrus really had a quiet night. Covington was killing and J.J. Redick was killing with a shot. And um, they're a really good team. They're supposed to be the second best team in the East, um, even without the Fresh Prince, um, Ben Simmons. They proved to be a tough team, and I heard a lot of people being negative, saying, or oh, the Pistons are struggling without a Ben, uh, without a ben Simmons 76ers. Hey, it is what it is, man. You got to get the win. However you want to get the win, you got to get it, and that's what they did tonight. Um, you know, they came from behind for, like, the first three quarters. Fourth quarter, they turned it up just enough, and Blake did just enough to get by. Um, overtime, uh, Reggie Jackson hit a big, big shot. Um, he hit some free throws. Yeah, he hit some free throws. He hit a big shot. Then came away and um, off a screen and fouled J.J. Reddick. He got a four-point play that put the uh, – I think it put the uh, Sixers up by two or whatever. Yeah, by two. And then um, – yeah, by two. I think it put it up by two. And then, uh, you know, Dwayne Casey, who's been doing an amazing job with the team so far, he called an excellent play. You know, Reggie came off a screen. Then Blake came off a screen, went in, popped out, caught the ball. Somebody else came, uh, you know, kind of as a kind of picking off of, uh, the Blake. Blake act like fake, like he handed the ball to him. Defense reacted. The lane opened up. Blake got an and one, hit the game with a free throw. JJ Reddy came down to try to win the game with a three, um, and he missed it. But uh, like I said, the NBA is going to be the number one sport in sport in America, man. Um, you got all types of different nationalities playing it. Um, you got these high-scoring games that remind me of the 80s when uh, teams just rut- routinely score above 100. I think you're going to have a lot of teams scoring uh, ab- above 100 points this year and average 100. Maybe some of the new defensive rules they implemented, but it seems like the talent level was raising. I'm thinking last year's draft, or this year past year, last year's draft and this past year's draft is raising. They were two um, talent-heavy drafts. They're raising the, the – they're raising the – the talent level in the NBA, which was piss poor, and um, next year with Zion Williams and the rest of them guys are going to raise it again, and the NBA is trending to be one of the most popular sports in the world. It's going to be the number one sports in um, America. 
thanks to NFL clearing itself with, with whatever they got going on and petty rules and stuff of that nature. It's turning off fans in the NBA. They just get it, how to treat their players. They get it, how to make the game fun. And now the players, you know, are starting to develop, you know, fundamentals at a young age. But um, tonight I was, you know, impressed with the Pistons. I'm impressed with the 3-0 start. I'm impressed with how Reggie Jackson played and how the Wayne Casey got him to play. If it was a dark uh, spot on the team today, with, well, Luke Kennard didn't play last game, coach decision, but – um, he sucked again tonight, you know, whatever going on with him, injury. And Stanley Johnson, you know, um, he regressed from his last game. He didn't score a point today, three assists, one rebound. I just think it's over with him. I know Casey loves him, want to develop him, but if it, this thing don't pop this year, he got to go. And I'm, you know, still don't like Reggie Jackson. He had an all right game. I don't see nothing special about him. I never did see anything special about Reggie Jackson, but – he ain't messing up the chemistry. He playing within himself. He playing like an average NBA point guard as opposed to. So you can't knock him. But uh, Stanley Johnson and Luke Kennard are definitely the Ducks of the year. And uh, Glenn Robson III did not play. Neither did John Lohr. He did not play as well. Um, Kyrie Thomas, Bruce Brown Jr., Jose Calderon, all DMPs, man. Zaza Pachulia made a great defensive play on Joel and Beeb in overtime. So shout out to him. He's paying off dividends. He's been doing his thing. And um, showing his championship caliber um, ability um, so uh, so far, he had a couple straight games for the for the Pistons, and then made a big defensive play on Joel and Beeb that just make it, make it even bigger game. Then the stats can't really um, prove. So, um, you know, shout out to the Pistons today. They got the win, one thirty three, one thirty two, and uh, you know, on to the next one. I think Cleveland. It's time to whoop on Cleveland. Not sure where that game is at. I can pull it up real quick. So let's check it out. Um, it is Thursday. Oh, it's here in Detroit. And then the Celtics come next Saturday. So those are the, new, the next two games. They got a day off tomorrow. And they play the Cavaliers. They come here. Then they got another day off. And then Saturday, Kyrie Irving uh, and the Boston Celtics come here. And then after that, uh, next Tuesday, we go to Boston and play the Celtics. And then back-to-back with a home and roll with, 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 with the Celtics. So Motor City Sports Talk. Appreciate everybody for rolling through. Make sure you smash the subscribe button. We talk Lions, Pistons current events around Detroit, doing more of those videos. If you want to make a donation, that link's in the description. Want to get at me in the email, that link's there as well.